Uh, we didn't. Uh, we accidentally uh, didn't press record. Nobody's gonna know. <laughs> I want them to know. You want to give yourself a reminder. We just recorded for twenty minutes without pressing record. <laughs> So we didn't record. Woo! We talked for 20 minutes yeah, we just without talked, pressing record. We talked to the recam- I can't remember. That's not recording. Okay. Anyways. Oh, head. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Queer Collective Podcast. My name is Carbon. And I'm Emily, but today you can call me the love guru. <laughs> Welcome to the show. So today we are going to be talking about relationships, specifically communication within those relationships. Now, we are going to be giving you five actionable tips that you can take away and start implementing immediately to better your relationships. Now, this can apply to your romantic relationships, professional relationships, friend relationships, family relationships, all of the above. These five tips will, I think definitely help you out what about the relationship with my dog this can help you with your animal relationships with your nature relationships with your bug relationships (laughs) (laughs) now we're in this shit's all encompassing (laughs) now buckle up strap in and here we go let's take this ride now you're gonna want to stick around to the end and listen to the whole podcast because not only are we going to be giving you those five tips throughout the podcast but also we're going to be answering the question of can you and or should you change your partner in order to communicate better are you wondering are you curious i know you're curious do you think miss carbon changed me do you think miss emily changed carbon stay and find out (laughs) before tip number one i want to tell a little story that i heard in a podcast it was on this american life which i would recommend Mm. great set of podcasts yes heck yeah um they're like nice for listening to before bed You need like that calming type voice. But basically it kind of ties into the fact that you were saying that this applies to all types of relationships. And she was recording this podcast, basically like talking about being alone and people's ability to be alone. And it was on the basis of COVID and a lot of people having to spend time alone um, for potentially the first time in their lives. And the first person that she spoke to was an astronaut who was up in a space space station alone for seven months and she just like wanted to get his take on being alone and what he said was kind of interesting like they kept him very busy so he didn't really get to feel bored or anything so he was actually fine but he said he would rather be alone than be with another person up there because apparently a lot of his colleagues who have gone up as like a partnership have left despising each other and said that if they had a weapon up there they probably would have killed each other whoa yeah so that shows hardcore yeah yeah yeah. so that shows that it does not need to be a romantic relationship for you to have to work on your communication so these five tips can also help you with your astronaut relationships Yeah, I just wanted to say that because I feel like a lot of that would apply to all of you. Yeah, all of you astronauts out there, hit that (laughs) like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because we drop these podcasts (laughs) weekly. (laughs) This is like our primary demographic, I think. Astronauts, yes. (laughs) You may be wondering, why the F do these whammons have the right to give me relationship advice? Well... Good question. I know you're (laughs) curious. Let us answer that for you. So a lot of it is personal experience, like we've said in the past. I didn't go to school to become a guru. (laughs) You didn't? No. You didn't take that guru class? No. What? Uh -uh. Everybody takes that guru class. I'm Uh -uh. in here. Let's go. (laughs) So we are speaking purely from a lot of personal experience uh by no means have we experienced everything that there is when it comes to relationships of course however we have had within this relationship in particular to do a lot of um reworking the way that we handle communication arguments happiness like everything Mm -hmm. in between and how to handle each other so for reference Emily and I not only now live together, uh, but we also... In a very, very small room. It's not that small. It's a decent room. It's for But for two people, it's kind of (laughs) small. But 
not only do we live together, but we also work together within the same company. Like mm -hmm. she does graphic design. I do video production. Uh, we also have this nonprofit, which is Queer Collective. And we also work out together. We do yoga together. We do a lot of things together, probably too much, especially ever since COVID hit. But here we are. Yeah. So basically, we have had to essentially really get to know each other and get along in order to do everything together without wanting to pull each other's hair out. Yeah. And <laughs> I've had to do a lot of personal self-work to like get myself to this point as well where we have like this really great relationship like for context the reason that we are choosing to do this topic today is because one of our roommates actually suggested it mm -hmm. because he noticed like how much we grew together especially throughout the lockdown and he said it's something that we should talk about so here we are shout out mark shout out mark mark andre <laughs> so let's just without further ado let's jump into it so tip number one be able to work within yourself and recognize when you need to grow. Now, as everybody should know, communication is a two-way street. It's not just one person is doing everything wrong, the other person's perfect. So likely, if you're having communication issues, you are part of the problem. Not only do you have to look within yourself to see where you're falling short on communication, but also you have to, first and foremost, be willing and open to actually think, wow, I was wrong. Or, wow, I have not been communicating very effectively. How can I fix that? And this is a big one. I think it's one of the most important ones that we're going to say. I think say. this is the most important one. But... I have noticed that some people don't even notice this for like their whole lives. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Some people go their whole lives never personally reflecting, which I really think is something that everybody should be doing. Yeah. Even just like for personal growth, it doesn't even like matter if you're in a romantic relationship. You should also always be like willing to grow and willing to reflect on yourself. And I think some of the reasons why we don't do that, a lot of it falls down to ego mm -hmm. you know afraid to admit that you're wrong or 100%. you just don't want to feel like you messed up yeah which i have fallen guilty of many many times yeah my too. ego gets in the way to this day and there's plenty of times where i have and i'm going to be wrong without being willing to admit it and it's something to continuously work on it's not mm -hmm. a quick fix yeah and this is something that i honestly have noticed was a bit of a track record for me throughout my relationships like starting in high school of course like your first relationship is never going to be your best relationship you're learning you don't know how to do any of it so that was definitely my most toxic relationship just in terms of the way that I was acting but what I did notice was that I would start arguments almost for the sake of just starting an argument and wanting to be right but even if the person did convince me throughout that argument that I was wrong and I would realize it in my head, I would not admit it. Like, I would just keep arguing and keep arguing. And it's exhausting. <laughs> like, that is yeah. so exhausting. But It's exhausting and it's also toxic. Yeah. But you know what it took for me to change that? What? It took me being in a relationship with you and not wanting to lose you, not wanting to make it toxic again. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to make this work and I knew in order to do that, I had to look inward. And some of that was you telling me this, you know, it was like, I don't like how you're acting. I don't like that you're always sad, depressed, anxious, et cetera. Like it's impacting our relationship and like you have to get help. And you like, you really pushed me towards that, which I'm very like grateful for because it's helped me become a more grounded person. And it's definitely has like improved our relationship as well. So don't be afraid to do the work. It is hard work, but it's worthwhile. It is hard work. And that's really what it takes when it comes to building effective and successful relationships. Totally. And when I say successful, it doesn't mean that everything's perfect all the time. It does not. It means that there's going to be issues that come up. It means that there's going to be arguments or fights or disagreements. But you now have the tools to work through it. 
totally yeah and i think another big part was i used to think everything was the biggest deal ever oh my god me too yeah and i think <laughs> sometimes you're i still do you're still working through that and i'm, I'm still, still working needing through to like, that. poke you about it absolutely but like i've talked about on this podcast so many times already is that i've reflected a lot especially just like in terms of my own anxiety which was the cause a lot of the cause of me thinking that everything was the end of the world and that like I everything needed to be blown up but I've reflected thought about the size of the freaking universe and how small I am in comparison um and realizing (laughs) that the world doesn't revolve around you and if something happens it's fine yeah and it's just another hurdle you need to get over though like you we were all very tenacious people we will overcome this however many shitty things are thrown at you all at once you can overcome it and you're a strong person and you like you don't need to let it uh, impact you Mm -hmm. because it's just gonna make you feel worse it's gonna make the people around you feel worse totally yeah and like emily mentioned i still to this day have my days where something happens and i think it's the biggest deal in the entire world and thankfully i do have her to kind of poke me and be like hey it's not especially when it's such a small thing um sometimes i let it impact my whole day Mm -hmm. and that's no way to live my life i would despise myself if i was like 80 years old and i reflected back and i was like wow i literally let everything impact me i letting exactly that's exhausting i'm letting situations control me instead of me controlling the situations yeah but the t is and you just brought it up and, and this is the whole point of tip number one is that when i call you out like that you're willing to hear it and yeah. it doesn't start a fight between us because I'm sure at one point it would have. Yeah. But you're willing to hear it. It's something that you've already recognized within yourself. We've talked about it. And I told you, do you want me to call it out when I see it? Mm-hmm. And you do. You know what I, I mean? Do. So you need to be willing to hear it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a huge, huge point. Um, so going back to being open and willing to receive that kind of feedback and criticism and being able to apply it Mm -hmm. instead of just letting your ego get in the way of that blocking it out and never growing from it so you again have to open up to that and reflect within yourself boom number one are you ready for number two i don't think you're ready do you think we're gonna handle it hit the like button if you're ready so tip number two And I'm going to let you expand on this after I say it, but it is giving immediate feedback instead of holding on to it. Huge. How many times in our lives have we felt something, whether it's being upset, angry, or resentful, and we just bottled it in to our small little package of a human, Mm -hmm. and we never release it, we never address it, it never comes to a conclusion, and you just keep it, you hold it. You yeah. hold on to that resentment. You hold on to that negativity. And then later on, as you keep packing it in, you just release it. And sometimes of- it's in small little bursts Ugh. of you just being awful and mean to a lot of different people in your life because you're mad at this one person. But that's the yeah. thing. It makes you unpleasant to be around totally. when you hold resentment. <laughs> yeah. When you hold anger, when you hold any mm-hmm. kind of negativity, you are not fun to be around. Nope. And I know this because when I hold it, I am not fun to be <laughs> Definitely. around. And I've been told it. Yeah. But what you were saying is when it comes to your partner or the person that you're mad at, a lot of the times for me, it's been a roommate because I'm a very non-confrontational person. So mm-hmm. I do just pack it all in. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Until it ain't fine and you explode and then potentially you ruin a relationship Mm -hmm. so and who wants to ruin a relationship right nobody i'm sure so yeah like you mentioned even with a roommate if you pack it and pack and pack it and you never confront whatever the issue might be it's gonna get bad it's gonna get bad and then you explode on them and then they're like whoa where did this come from and it's just like a big deal Mm -hmm. whereas if you had resolved it right then and there it would have been a much much smaller deal that could have gotten handled right away instead of make it into this huge scenario a really good example was back when we first started dating i 
used that model <laughs> of holding resentment and letting it out later. And I used that every single time, which no is way. awful. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> How I came around to starting to give immediate feedback as soon as I felt it was ironically through work. And it's kind of funny because it, it came from a place that you would never expect that kind of advice to come from. But I was doing this workshop uh, when I used to work at Myo Detox, and it was all about leadership. And within leadership, much like within a relationship, you have to give instant feedback. That's the key word is instant if for some reason, say for example, you're in public or whatever, and you can't give it instantly, then you give it at the best, soonest possible time that you can. So when I learned this through my work, I was like, you know what? I know this is meant for leadership and like handling a team, but let's try this out in my relationship, see what happens. So Emily and I were in an argument and we were, it was super cold. It was in like December or January and we got in an argument outside because we were actually passing each other. I was on my way to dance rehearsal and she was on her way home. I saw her and I was like, oh, do you remember what we were fighting about? I don't remember what <laughs> we were fighting about. We were mad. But we were mad. And I was like, you know, that couple? I'm going to get her now. So I walked up to her and I was like, this, this and this is how you made me feel. And she was like, you know what? This is and this is how you made me feel. And we were still arguing. There was still no like reflection or anything like that. And, you know, I was like, I'm going to go to dance practice. Fine. And you were like, fine. And then you walked away and I walked away and we were both still mad. I would say more mad as we walked away yeah. than when we were approaching you each know other. that couple that you see embarrassingly fighting on the side of the fucking road <laughs> that was us that's us <laughs> before this though before we don't do that shit no more we don't do it no more so we walked away super angry as i was on the bus on the way to dance rehearsal i remembered what i had been taught at mayo so then i took out my phone i sent you this long text of like hey this is how you made me feel I'm sure this is how I made you feel. This is what I've done wrong. And this is what I am going to do to fix it. So I addressed that first. I addressed me first, my wrongdoings first. And then I said, also, this is what I think that you did wrong. This is how I think you can fix it. But we can work on a solution together. And also, everything that we're doing right now that isn't communicating effectively like it's not adding anything positive to our relationship it's not making us happy we're both miserable while having this argument so let's work together to fix it mm -hmm. and i sent that and i didn't know what her reaction was going to be i didn't know her as well then so i sent it and i was kind of like Ugh! and just kind of waited for the response and you responded immediately and you were like hey yeah that makes sense totally agree let's work this out i realized that what i did wrong and what you did wrong let's work on it and i was like what i was like revolutionary my life <laughs> changed yeah so two things happened there one i was able to reflect within myself and look at the wrongdoings that i had first tip number one and the second thing that happened was that you were also open to receiving this feedback yeah but i think at that point though because this was very early on in our relationship i hadn't come to that point where i was really doing a lot of self-reflection work but i think what was really key in what you were saying is that you wrote down first what you realized that you did wrong you recognized my feelings and you said how you're gonna fix it yeah and i think when you're in an argument especially like when things feel very toxic a lot of the time people aren't like you're not listening truly you're reacting yeah you know yeah and at that point i was probably reading like the first line of your text message you know and then i was responding i was so mad i was like uh, 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 you know what i mean right so you putting that at the top is probably the most beneficial and it made me want to keep reading so maybe that's a good place to start for a lot of people if things do feel really escalated really toxic in any type of relationship, I think that's a good way to start until people are really willing to self-reflect. And I think that that's honestly 
a very, very key thing when you're wording something. Because mm. wording does matter. If you start off by saying, hey, this is all the things you're doing wrong. And oh, yeah, by the way, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It just comes off as disingenuous. But if you start off with like, hey, I really realize where I went wrong, where I made my mistakes and this is how I'm going to fix them. And then you're like, OK, this is what you did and this is how I felt when you did that. Then that opens up a conversation. Now, this goes back to just swallowing your ego. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to swallow your ego in order to put forth a good energy, a positive energy that allows for that type of conversation. Yeah. So many people, including myself in the past and sometimes now, they are hearing and reacting rather than actually truly listening yeah. as if that they care. So what I mean by that is like you're hearing something and then something triggers like a response in your head mm -hmm. and all that you're thinking about at that point is like oh it's my turn next i got the response i got the response okay okay and you mm -hmm. you don't even get to listen to the the rest of what they're saying because all you're thinking about is your response yeah but then you're like hold up listen to the Just rest listen. of the thing of whatever else that they have to say mm -hmm. listen to the rest of the story and then cultivate a response i like that you brought up the ego as well because i think swallowing your own ego if you're in a place where you're able to do that, which like I recommend that even if you uh, you don't want to do it, Ugh, I recommend you do it's it. Hard, but you swallowing your own allows the other person to like sort of set theirs aside as well. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they're like, okay, I got sort of an apology. They recognized like my feelings, what they did to me. Like, yeah, my ego is like yeah. I was right for how I reacted. Like I feel fine. You know yeah. what I mean? If they're really like that, totally. And keep in mind, in any kind of dispute argument or even like a small disagreement the other person is naturally going to be on guard yeah right so you need to drop your ego first to open up the space for them to feel like they can also do that as well in conclusion number two is immediate feedback and like we were saying a lot of the time immediate feedback requires you to set aside your ego in very big ways it requires you to be ready and open yeah. And keep in mind that you can't really have step number two without number one. Totally. So you're doing these in sequence. You have to, you mm. have to first drop your ego because if you give immediate feedback with a high, high ego, yeah. it's going to be shit feedback. Yeah. And like, I can totally understand people who are maybe a bit passive aggressive, sweep things under the rug because it can be very scary. Like confrontation is scary for some people, totally. especially if you have anxiety, it's a very scary thing. And it's made a lot of my roommate relationships really bad because with roommates like you need to be open and honest yeah and we the reason that i was honestly really able to address my communication was because we had a roommate liam and he is the best at confrontation Shout out liam the best at confrontation like i've never seen anyone like mediate situations so well just be so direct but not mean and i was like oh like i need to do this it's life-changing so like do it you know yeah when it comes to giving feedback it is not about being mean it's just about being direct and getting to the point and having a conversation after that number three, three. is something that i think is very very important and it is not saying hurtful things with the intent to hurt your partner you know what i mean like that yeah. conscious intent yeah. like when you get in fights and this happens with siblings it happens with everyone you totally. know where you're so mad at the person and despite how much you love them you say something so wicked where you know it's gonna burn that person you know what yeah. i mean and that's what sucks about being so close to someone and this shouldn't happen, but sometimes it happens where it's like someone that you know so, so well means that you essentially have more ammo mm -hmm. to use against them. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of being so close to someone is that they trust you with that information. So you yeah. throwing it right back at them is just like really low cold yeah and it hurts as well on the receiving end it, it hurts. hurts yeah yeah because I've been on both ends and it hurts both ways and it sucks the whole time yeah. and 
a little bit of that trust is broken every totally. time. Totally. And that's one big thing too. Like one huge example I would like to give in terms of romantic partners is getting in an argument and instantly just jumping to, well, why don't we just break up? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people do that. I've yeah. done that throughout all of my relationships. I've done like, that as well. And it makes the other person feel like they're disposable to you. Yeah, which is yeah. such a terrible feeling mm. for anybody to feel. Also, like just telling someone to leave, like those types of things. I think it starts to break down the trust. It breaks down your partner's confidence because they start to feel insecure about the relationship. It, like it weakens it every single time because that sounds like it's what you want then. So I knew with you that that was never something that I ever wanted. I like, I know that I want to be with you. I know that like to my core and I didn't in any way want to risk us actually breaking up. So I told myself like, I would never say that to you, you know, like I don't want to weaken our bond at all. Like I don't want to be that person to make you feel shitty. And I know in my heart, despite any argument that we have, I'm always going to want to work that out it's a list like it ties into especially the very first one being able to reflect on yourself being willing to like take in yeah. this feedback and like acting on it because i knew that that was something that i did that was not good that saying of like let's just break up was something that i used to throw around all the time and i was accustomed to doing it and i thought that that's that was like my go-to defense mechanism. Yeah. And the reason that I use that as a defense mechanism because, is because I didn't want to feel hurt. And I knew that I would feel insecure. I would feel just like the lowest version of myself if that were to happen to me. So as a defense, essentially, I threw it out first before they even had a chance to. Mm. Um, and even if they weren't thinking that, I just did it as a reaction and as a as a way to like protect myself as as a way to like boost myself up and feel better about myself of like i'm the one making this decision and that is a completely terrible way to go about your relationships is to like try to beat them to the punch so that you feel a little bit less hurt it's mm -hmm. it's not something that builds trust it's no. not something that brings any kind of positivity into your relationships you know unless you actually mean it you should not say it yeah and i think that is part of it though it's like if you find yourself doing this a lot especially with a romantic partner who you're choosing to be with maybe you should reflect on it like is this someone yeah. that you really want to be with because if the answer is yes then why do you want to hurt them yeah and then when it comes to family because especially siblings i find like my sister and I would do this a lot, like take information that we shared with each other and then hurt each other with it. And this is something that you like, again, you know that your relationship with a family member probably is very important to you and you don't want to hurt that person. So either sit down and communicate with them about it or like make that conscious decision in your mind, despite whatever argument we get in, despite how much they piss me off. I'm not going to attack them in that way because I know that I love them and I don't want to hurt them like that. Tip number four. Four! Now that we've gotten to this point, now we can start communicating our needs. Mm -hmm. That's tip number four, is to communicate your needs. The reason that this is so important is because if you have this whole discussion where you want to come to a good conclusion and you want to learn and you want to grow within your relationship, you need to be able to to communicate what you need out of the relationship, the way that you want to be approached, the way that you want to be consolidated or the way that you want to be given feedback. Everybody receives feedback in a different form. Some people want it super, super blunt. Some people want it in a bit of a softer sense. Feedback with a cherry on top. Feedback with a cherry on top. A little bit of whipped cream. Yeah. Um, or a softer, just a softer approach. That's what so, I like because I'm a sensitive shorty. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I like it super blunt. We have different ways that we prefer to receive feedback. So we had to early on communicate that and be like, hey, whenever there's an issue and you need to tell me something, approach it in this way. Mm. Because if I were to approach Emily with 
feedback in the style that I enjoy it or not enjoy it, but I prefer it, which is super blunt, I might end up hurting her feelings without intending to. So it's really important to just communicate what you require and need from your relationship in order to be happy and in order to communicate effectively. This list of things that you may need might be like a little bit of space, especially during like lockdown scenarios where you're in very close quarters. You need to be able to communicate your you time. Yeah. Like I have Emmy time. Laura has Laura time. If one of us walks in and we're like, he's Emmy time. (laughs) Then the other person is like, cool. Respect that. Yeah. Enjoy your trash TV. I'll be in the living room. <laughs> she watches a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but Next on we, Love Island. <laughs> but we communicated that. And it's not like a one-time thing, by the way. New needs pop up. Totally. Yeah. And you need to be able to like communicate that. Yeah. yeah. So how would you recommend that someone communicate that? Like for the other person to be receptive? Because sometimes the other person can feel hurt. Yeah. When you say your needs... I think it's to, personally, I think it's to approach it with A, the best of intentions and B, in a way that's clear Mm. and not degrading um, of the other person. So, for example, if I came up to you and I was like, hey, I really want to have a conversation about how we can communicate better and also how we can respect each other more. So how about we list a list of our needs? So I'll give you examples of my needs and then you give me yours and Mm. then we can talk about them and we can come to a good conclusion where we both respect each other's needs yeah bringing that up i think another good thing is that we've learned together is one doing this in private you know because we have a lot of roommates and sometimes it would just be something that one of us would blurt out in the kitchen with everyone else around and then you feel a bit attacked and like exposed so it's like asking the other person like is this a good time for us to talk about this can we go into this room and have a chat, you know? And that makes the other person more open open and willing to talk about it. Totally. And I think outline, outlining as well, once you start the conversation is like, I love you so much. I don't want you to take this in like this way, but I'm feeling like this and I'm feeling like I need some space, some whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Whatever relates to you, that's what you need to be communicating. So with all of that being said, tip number five, actually directly ties into number four which is that now that you've stated your needs you have to be willing and open to accept and respect the other person's needs Mm -hmm. so when it comes to for example maybe they need space you have to be willing to respect that and not take it as an attack or take it as something that hurts you because Mm -hmm. if somebody's stating their needs and this is truly how they operate as a human and this is how they help themselves feel better Mm -hmm. you need to be willing to give that i know for one thing in the beginning of our relationship both of us are very i guess like clingy people we like to spend a lot of time together and we did right off the bat so when either of us needed to sort of peel it back a little bit it felt like well said there's something wrong like what did i do you know, and then an argument would start and it was like, why would you need to go home? Like, you know, like that was the case. Like, if you didn't want to sleep at my house, I was like, what did I do? You know, instead of yeah. just being like, we just need some time apart. We're separate human beings. <laughs> yeah. You, even though we spent all of this time together, mm-hmm. we are still separate individuals mm-hmm. and we do operate in different ways there's definitely differences within the way that we take feedback within the way that we cope and that and the the way that we let out our emotions as well so you're someone that oftentimes does need a lot of space Mm. and i am the type of person that wants an immediate result resolution that dynamic right there can instantly be hard to navigate because if she's telling me that she needs space 
And I'm also feeling a certain type of way, uh, some sort of, I'm still holding on to some sort of negative emotion. I just want to be rid of it as soon as I possibly can. So for me, taking space is actually very, very difficult. And it, and it can be sometimes difficult to respect your space. It's not a lack of wanting to respect you and, and your space, but more so it kind of directly conflicts with my needs as well. Um, so figuring out like a middle ground in a way to respect both of our needs in in a way that makes sense and makes both of us feel content and happy um, mm -hmm. has definitely been a challenge and it's something that we need to practice consistently because like I mentioned it's not a one-time fix you have to always be willing to put in the work and get better and better at communicating and the only reason we did this is because we were forced to like before this happened before the lockdown happened we would have our alone time like we'd i'd go to school i'd be like studying in the library for hours on end you would go to work you'd have dance you know what i mean we'd go home on weekends and then boom stuck at home for like hours and hours and hours and we were driving each other crazy <laughs> and but then when i told you i would need emmy time sometimes it wasn't respected like you would get your feelings hurt right you're right. like why can't i sit yeah. and watch tv with you like like what's the difference you yeah. know and it's like but i just need to be myself I, I honestly think that something that really helped me respect that is that you didn't let up mm -hmm. you said this is my emmy time and i need it and this is what i require this is what makes me feel a bit more sane and it's a like bit how more I calm. recharge it's how you recharge yeah and every single time like you know yeah at first i would get my feelings hurt but you didn't back down from that because you knew that that was what you needed and mm. that helped me understand that yeah i'll just there you go like i'll, yeah. I'll close the door all right this is your time now mm -hmm. and now anytime that you say it yeah i'm like oh it. right emmy time yeah. and now you've created laura time i have <laughs> yeah sorry carbon time yeah so anytime that I I just need to recharge. I just need to be by myself. I, I'm like, okay, get out of the room. Yeah. Carbon time. And like <laughs> in some cases we like some different shows and it's like I wanna watch my show right now. Yeah. Get so out of here. We don't it's another thing. You don't have to watch all of the same shows. You don't have to do all the same stuff. Like mm -hmm. we do a lot together, but does we're still separate people. And mm -hmm. you like your shows, mostly trash TV. And I like my shows, mostly good TV. Mm, you like like weird YouTubers okay that's fair. <laughs> that's fair i'll watch things about like how to build a computer um, do you want, you, why would i watch that with you <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to hear about it <laughs> <laughs> keep it to so, yourself <laughs> i'm just excited about it but that's like the whole thing is like we have different interests we're good at different things no one needs to be good at Fucking everything no you know what i mean so and like you, you shouldn't you don't expect need to like me. the same things you yeah. don't need to have the same interests or the same hobbies or the same whatever you need to have separate stuff because mm -hmm. if everything's together then it's like ugh, bleh. yeah yeah maintain your own existence <laughs> yeah and this is coming from people that spend the majority <laughs> of the day together yeah okay yeah I will say though, one time when you had one of your videos on we got super super high on marijuana it was legal and you put on this video about like a camera backpack and my mind exploded like i was like Listen. i need this backpack how much is it and then you're like two thousand dollars i'm like it's 700 which is still a lot, for, lot a for a backpack, backpack. but so many well thought out pockets oh my I, god my mind exploded this <laughs> backpack it's a camera backpack right it holds all of your gear and it had so many well thought out pockets and compartments and pouches and it was beautiful I love a well thought out pocket because smash that like button this is literally if you like a well thought out pocket <laughs> in another <laughs> way that we've blended our interests is you love watching dance videos and like it did at one point hurt your feelings when i didn't want to watch these dance videos with you yes i was like i want to watch my it's trash so TV. important to me though yeah and that's the thing is like we found a way to blend it and we started watching world of dance because, because I like the competition mm -hmm. sort of aspect, sort of like trashiness is in there. Yes. And then you like to watch the dancers. And I started getting excited about also watching the dancers because yeah. it was presented to me in a competition style. And you bring up a good point is like if something is important to your partner and you don't necessarily love it, like for example, dance, I 
had no interest in dance, especially when we first started being together. But I knew that it's important to you. And I started making a conscious effort with it. Like I would go to your dance performances, you know what I mean? Like some of your battles, I got really excited about it. I started learning some of the lingo, you know, and I can give some feedback. And it's like when you have auditions, especially now when you're taping them, like I'll sit there and like, I support you. You yeah. know what I mean? So being a supportive human being, even if you're not interested, because like we're saying, there are separate interests, there's alone time, but also like knowing when to love and support. So that brings us back to the question, the initial question, should you change a person? Should you change your partner in particular? Because a lot of people are like, mm, he's a fixer upper. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's a fixer upper. It's okay. I got this. I can change her or yeah. him or they. What do you think? Well, okay. I'm going to give you my take because I actually don't know what your opinion is on this. So you free to disagree with me. Okay. I think that you should only help someone change in a way that they want to change. You know what I mean? Like you should not ever force change upon someone, like force someone to be the way that you think they should be. If they're happy the way they are, like it's never going to go well for you to try and make someone something that they aren't because they're going to end up resenting you perhaps. But the thing is, is like, surprise, surprise, you have changed me, but for the better because I knew that it was ways that I already wanted to be changed. I'm going to agree, but I have a part two. So to kind of revise it and give my own opinion, I think that you can change a person slash should only within two conditions. First, they have to want to change and be willing to change they have to want it you can't force it on them second you have to also be willing to change and the reason i say this is because if you like insist change upon someone and they do it and then they insist change upon you and then you refuse then you're just the ultimate hypocrite. If you're trying to help this person grow and become a better person, and they're also trying to do the same to you, you have to be willing to put in the same amount of work that you are demanding. Yeah, and I think like it's like, how do you find someone like that? Because I am a very motivated person. Like I know exactly what I want in life. and But I've dated a lot of people who don't. Mm -hmm. You know, I've dated a lot of people who could kind of care less and I've loved being around them, but it's made me someone who I don't want to be like it's kind of rubbed off of me in ways where I get lazy and I turn into someone who I don't really like. It's like, where did that year go? What did I do? I think one dramatic difference in our relationship versus all my past ones is we are kind of a bit cut from the same cloth in the way where I knew instantly like you're a very motivated person and you have a dream, you know, like you want to be a dancer. You have all these like fun skills that you like to employ the same way I do. Like your idea of doing something fun is the same as mine. Like we love taking photos we love being creative like that's our fun time together i have been in relationships where either i was very motivated and they weren't or we were both motivated but for very very polar opposite things or like just what? very different visions um so i've been in a relationship where my goals and dreams and aspirations in life just did not align with the other person mm. so say for example i want to pursue something in art and they want just to make money and mm, stability you know, and stability yeah which is a great thing and it's totally fun and there's nothing wrong with it yeah. but it just didn't align with me mm -hmm. because i didn't have that same dream and aspiration and i didn't yeah. share that moral like of course i want to make enough money to to live and of course i want mm -hmm. some form of stability but it just looks very different to me than it did yeah, to them good point that's a huge piece of it too is like i always in my mind with all my past relationships i was like i want to marry this person like i want to be with them forever like i love the way that they make me feel but to be honest i could never visualize my life with them i never visualized growing old with them i never visualized the next step with them i just was in the here and now and i like felt it and i was so excited but with you like I visualize the entire path, you know, and it's because our lives are very much aligned 
And I think that's important for people. Just to have some sort of alignment. Yeah. Some sort of alignment. Like, you don't have to see the whole path. You don't like, have to work together. You don't have to do all this shit together for some people. <laughs> that's not what you want. Yeah. But and some people just would never ooh, want that. Ever. Everybody's different. Everybody's, everybody's different. different. It's more so just like, how did they align with me? Like, how yeah. do our paths align to create, like, something more beautiful? Do they help me grow? Are they going to help me achieve the goals that I want? Are they headed in the same direction as me? Do they want to grow? Do they also have either similar aspirations or just aspirations that align with yours? Or are they just happy where they are right now? Because if you're going to be with someone who is just completely happy with where they're at, they don't want to grow, it's going to make you a bit stagnant. If you're both people that are very content and happy where you're at and like this is it then that's something that could work yeah and tying that back into changing people is if you're with somebody who doesn't want to grow and you want to grow it is exhausting to try and change that character trait yeah so you have just like answer the question obviously you have changed me in some ways in some very like direct ways like I'm kind of a messy person with my room like I don't pick up my clothes I'm like blah 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 I keep my workspace messy and I feel like you're like training me like a dog (laughs) but (laughs) here's what she does okay this is just like basic stuff it's not dog training it's just basic human stuff the hamper's right here right here and she takes off her pants and puts them directly beside them (laughs) on the floor like how does that make any sense whatsoever (laughs) is it like and you once told me that it was like i'm not i just haven't decided if i want to wear it again or not yes i don't want to put it in the laundry hamper with like the other dirty stuff because then it's gonna smell dirty and it's not necessarily dirty back in the drawer or wherever it goes that's like you know the people like when you make toast and you put butter on it and then you put your, your your knife like kind of on the sink, yeah. but kind of not. <laughs> and you're like, might make more toast, <laughs> might not. We'll see. It's like that, but the clothes version. Yes. It's like, just pick one. It's like an example. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, though, I recognize how stupid it is, though, because I would just spend one day a week like deep cleaning my room, and it would take like all day, and then either later that day or the very next day i'd get dressed and just destroy my room and i'm like oh my god like i need to fix this i need to fix this i just like i can't do it and that's the thing like i want it to change and that's why your dog training is effective (laughs) (laughs) because now if it's clean and i know that it's clean i'll just put it in the drawer okay you've also changed me a lot as well do tell Like, in a way that I want it to change, too, okay. which, again, is key. Um, I'm excited to hear this. It's mostly ego-based. Ego. So Ego. Yes. Oh, I was like, it made you more environmentally friendly? Eco-based. <laughs> <laughs> there was a want. There was a desire for it. So, obviously, it's going to happen when you have the person that's pushing you to do it. So, mm-hmm. for me, my ego was really, really high. I didn't like to lose um, any arguments. Mm -hmm. And that's another toxic word is to lose versus win. Mm -hmm. Like if one person wins in an argument, it really means you both lost. And a win, a true win is when you just like figure it out together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now that you said all those points, I'm like, wow, yeah, you have grown so much. I have. It goes back to like care. Like Mm -hmm. I just like I care about you. Yeah. I don't want to cause more arguments and i don't want to cause more tension so like i've had to drop my ego yeah. in order to resolve yeah. some issues and resolve some some things like mm-hmm. that we've worked on so i didn't think about it that way so i would say that you've also done that for me yeah so we've helped each other grow but we have also first and foremost wanted to grow yeah. so in conclusion you can change a person they have to be willing to change Mm -hmm. you also have to be willing to put in the same amount of work can't be one outweighing the other so a way to sort of finalize that is in my mind i think you shouldn't change a person but i think you should grow with a person and i think that's the healthier way to view it because changing someone is kind of like stripping them of who they are and it's it has definitely a negative connotation but growing with someone is something that we all want to do yeah so and you do that on your own as well yeah absolutely every single thing helps you grow in some way and if you're not winning 
you're learning, which is still winning. Woo! If you have found this helpful, if yeah. you take even one tip, actionable tip, that helps you in your life and your communication, please do hit that like button. Yeah. Consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you also hit that notification bell because we drop these weekly. Yeah, every Wednesday slash Thursday. And yeah, in comment, if you liked a specific tip, if it was helpful for you, if it made you realize something, definitely comment it. And like we said at the beginning of the video, if you prefer the sillier videos if you prefer the more serious ones if you prefer like advice us talking about serious topics like let us know you know and if you have a topic in mind that you yes. might want us to talk about help us brainstorm <laughs> place it in those comments <laughs> yes. and then we just might cover it Heck yeah. so we want to give you the content that you want to see and hear so mm -hmm. if you have a suggestion uh and you're listening on apple podcast or spotify do send us a dm via instagram it's yeah. linked in the description and if you're on youtube just type it in the comments thank you guys so much for watching click subscribe and like and hit that notification bell and we will see you in the next episode peace Woo.